Welcome in Wednesday edition. Blue Sky Live here with you. Chase Parm, Neil McCready, Clark Ford Studio this morning. Catch up on some football news. We've got the midway point of the SEC baseball season. Is Ole Miss took two out of three from Mississippi State. You definitely know that about, about, about that right now. But we'll uh, hit some of those topics and more coming up today with you on the uh, on the program. Ole Miss and Arkansas State got uh, inclement weathered out last night there in Jonesboro. Kind of a wasted, not kind of a, a wasted trip, two and a half hours, two hours, 45 minutes toward Arkansas for uh, for that one. No makeup date was set, which tells me there might not be a makeup date at this point. They might simply just call it and move on. Arkansas State with an RPI that doesn't make that the dumbest thing in the world. That plays into a little bit of our discussion today as we look at where Ole Miss is, what's ahead, and what the weekend really meant and much more coming up on the show. A show brought to you every day by all the Blue Sky locations throughout Mississippi, including the Oxford Exxon. We've got lunch specials, 569, a couple of sides of bread, any size fountain drink here locally. But across the state, you got all the Sweet Daddy's locations. you got the new Epicenter down in Macomb. Wherever you are in Mississippi, there's a Blue Sky close by. So uh, head in, check it out. Gas, clean convenience stores, and much more. Again, coming to you from the Clark Ford Studio. We are Clark Fords in Amory, Mississippi, 662-257-1900 is the number. Call it. Ask for Corey Clark. Tell Corey what Ford product you're looking for. He'll send you a quote within 15 minutes in business hours. Right to the bottom line. No hassle, no haggle. You get the right. quote, and the rest is up to you. You can shop that quote around. You can do what I've done, what I uh, recommend that you do, and that's hop into a Clark Ford today, 662-257-1900. Corey and the people at Clark Ford, they want to be your car guy. They want to be your truck guy. They'll prove to you what that means when you make the call, 662-257-1900. Uh, guest, join on the Campbell Clinic hotline. The Campbell Clinic is in Oxford now, 2608 South Lamar Boulevard, Suite 102, just across the street. From the cottages at Hooper Hollow, the Campbell Clinic provides full-service orthopedic care, everything from sports medicine to foot and ankle surgery to spine and total joint care, pediatric orthopedics, physical therapy, and more. To book an appointment, go to CampbellClinicOxford.com or call 901-759-3111. Walk-ins always welcome at the Campbell Clinic, Monday through Friday, 7.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. I was asking the stream if I have uh, seen Seth Emerson's column from The Athletic. I have not. It is about uh, revenue sharing and the transfer portal, so that probably is a – conversation for another day simply because i don't have the opportunity to read and digest it as we are uh, as we're talking here i've hit the mental saturation point on this i'm, I'm being honest mm-hmm. I'm, I'm telling people the truth which is like someone saw my wife out somewhere and they're like i bet y'all talk about nil and she's like oh holy shit no somebody and actually said asked, that i bet y'all talk about nil and she's like no I wow mean, would you hold on whoa, whoa, whoa. because people, that's nonsensical because people think that those of us who live the in the normal this, person does not think no, this. No, 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 no. The average person is listening to our show right but now. I, no way they think that. I don't know about you, but like when it comes to these topics, I've hit saturation point on them. Like I, whatever, just do what you're gonna do. It's like I have one thing I've learned about. Like I give on three credit here. I I really do, and I give two four seven credit for this. Maybe Rivals has it. I just haven't seen it. They've got people that are obviously dedicated to sitting down in front of a computer all day long. He, he hit the portal. He hit the portal. He hit the portal. I, I, I catch myself going, how do you keep up with all of this? Because now you're doing football portal and basketball portal. How do you keep up with all this and make it, like, manageable? I I see people say it, and I'm kind of like, yeah, I, I wish I had that luxury of just tell me in August who's on the team. I'm going to go. This, this is too dizzying to follow. I'm just going to go whatever. There And I think that's the majority of people. I mean, you have the diehard diehards are following the portal like intensely. I think most people are like, this is kind of wild. I'm just going to let it be. It'll solve itself out and then kind of go from there. It's not even, it, it, I, I guess it is. Now that you say that, I'm thinking through it. I don't know that it's even mental saturation in that way as much as I just feel like we're having Groundhog Day. It's the same damn thing over and over and over and over again. And no matter what column is written, it all kind of has the same yep. general feel. And I go, oh my God, we've said this 7,000 times. Yeah. I mean, nothing against like, that. I, like, I'm, I'm, again, we're telling the truth and we're going to keep doing it. It is what it is. It's almost kind of like the probation period a little bit. But 
there's only so many times every day that we go, hey, the conversation in the first segment is this is unsustainable. Well, okay. You know what I mean? I'm not, even, say, I'm not right. even saying that. I mean, what I'm saying is like, I don't, nothing against Seth. I, I don't know what in the world he, you could write right now that would be new. I mean, I'm kind of like to the point of, all right, we'll do it already. Figure it out. Whatever you're going to do. Seth's general premise, and again, I haven't read through the whole thing, is that kids get more in revenue sharing the longer they stay at one school. Okay. So say as a freshman, you get 50 grand. If you're there as a sophomore, you get 75 grand. If you're there as a junior, you get 100 grand. And it goes by. The problem with that is just the participation. Like there's so many issues. You're putting limits on money without a collective bargaining agreement. Won't work. So many people in our field, I'm not, talking, I'm not referring to Seth in general, they, they don't understand. I've, one thing I've learned, a lot of people in our field who cover college sports they don't watch pro sports. And if they do, they don't keep up with the business of pro sports. Does it make sense? And they're not interested. They're, they're, more and more, we're skewing towards fans. You cover a school because you're a big fan of that school, not because you love journalism or you love to write or you love to broadcast. You cover a team because you love that team, which means that your energy all goes towards that. So you don't really keep up with Major League Baseball or the NFL or, or the – or anything from a from a business standpoint, you don't understand an NBA salary structure, so you don't have in, no one's proposing anything at the college level that really makes sense. It's because all just, nothing makes sense because the books don't make sense, of course, and it's all TV related, which doesn't make sense. And but at the at the NBA, we'll use the NBA for example. They're not funding other sports. They're just playing professional basketball. So the, the WNBA thing, there's this, this, the people are all up in arms about, oh my God, all, that's all Caitlin Clark's going to make? It's like, yet yeah, the league makes no money. Why is this so difficult to absorb? But the answer is so many of the people in our field, no offense, not get, I'm, it, it's going to sound like a political take. It's not. They're so liberal and utopian that they don't understand that. Well, why can't you give the... Well, it's two different things. It's not really liberal. It's utopian. I mean... That's pretty intertwined. But you get political once yeah, you go there. It's I've, not necessarily I've, I've that. I've never met a conservative as a utopian. Never in my life. Never once. I've never met well, one. Yeah, anyway, anyway. Go, go ahead. Doesn't okay. matter. Why can't you just pay them what you pay them in? Well, because LeBron James brings a hell of a lot more money into it than anybody in the WNBA. Mm -hmm. There's reality. Sure. People pay thousands to see... LeBron James or or Giannis Antetokounmpo or Nikola Jokic they they don't yet they maybe they will maybe Caitlin Clark and and Angel Reese will be the difference maybe they will completely elevate that league into something that produces revenue that has not been produced yet but as of this moment that's what she makes because that's all it's worth she's not going to make as much as Victor Wembanyama makes with the Spurs. And there's a reason for that, and it's not sexist. Seth's goal with this, and I'll move on, because, it again, it has holes, and it doesn't really matter. It's just one person's column yesterday to move the conversation around a little bit, is that he thinks that it would have a chance to keep the mid-level guy that is a depth guy. He still thinks the main marketable pieces are leaving mm -hmm. and getting their big money or whatever else. He thinks it keeps the second team whatever from going somewhere because – why chance it when I'm just going to get this if I stay? Oh, that's his. He, it's literally a band aid that he admits is not fixing the problem. It's just a band aid. I've not read it, but is he saying that if a football player makes fifty thousand dollars, that a softball player has to make the same? I, I did not read his qu section that way. Um, okay. well, but maybe I don't know. Hold on, because he's let's see. A guy goes, isn't the challenge with that Title IX? If a football team is paid X by the school, then women's sports will also need X. And based on what people are worth, aka revenue generated, it doesn't balance out. The same applies to most men's sports, but Title IX is a big challenge here. Um, Actually, maybe is I don't know. He says, let's say you're a football player and your, ad re your revenue sharing payment from a school is $50,000 annually. 
That's just an estimate, but a reasonable starting point. Okay. For a football team's full roster of 85 players, it would total $4.25 million. And since football scholarships usually take up one-third of an athletic department's scholarships, it's getting close to that 10 to $15 million the athletic departments are setting aside. So he's saying he believes athletic departments are setting aside 10 to 15 for that purpose. I do not believe that. I believe athletic departments are setting aside that amount for the revenue sports. And the numbers are way higher than Seth is giving it credit for per player. Because that's the deal here. That's where everything is. That, that was, we, we talked about this a couple weeks ago. That's the disconnect that's happening. Is everybody thinks revenue sharing means every player on campus gets an equal amount. And that is not what the administrators and the schools are saying. They are saying that it is generated out as a limited minor amount, and then everything on top of that is still salary cap. That a that a that a sport or a school gets it, but then it can be spread like a salary cap. You can go do whatever you want to do inside that structure. Does that make sense? Yeah. It's not simply everybody gets the same check. That's not how that that's not how the the athletic directors and administrators and presidents are, are even approaching revenue sharing in the concept. That they are. In is that this way. with the collectives inside the universities, or the collectives are still outside? Um, I mean, closely joined. However, you want to phrase that. I mean, you know, because I, I said this, the Mississippi legislature is pushing rules through, and what what will essentially the way it was explained to me is this next step would allow the universities and the collectives to contractually come together on deals. So, look, it's it's a bunch of red tape to get to where it would be if you were just in-house. So, for example, the Grove Collective, I'm just using Ole Miss, not exactly a Grove Collective comment. The Grove Collective, this is for you to understand, owns the rights to a player. Okay. okay? Yep. They sell those rights to the, uni- the athletic department to market the player. Mm-hmm. And in exchange, the athletic department gives the Grove Collective a million bucks for that. Because we're looking for loopholes instead of just doing what it is. Yeah. But again, credit to the legislatures that have to find the loophole because we're not nationally at a point to just do the other way. Yeah. So you go, hey, how can I manipulate the law and create a shit ton of paperwork? But we'll get to where I got to get. Okay, that's how you do it. And everybody looks at it and goes, oh, come on. But it's what's required right now given the... Required by the NCAA? Yeah, it's just... (laughs) <laughs> we're not, we're, it's not technically allowed to go any further than that. So you okay. just do this for now and go, okay, sorry, paralegal. It's going to be a few documents that we got to get through here. Okay. And then we'll run up some legal hours and we'll pay for those. And it, but flat, you flat circle, but you still have a title nine problem. Well, you always have a title nine. Problem. I mean, that's, I, I get mailbag questions. I've got one that I got to answer this morning about, do you think they're going to pull away? And I'm like, what does that even mean? I don't even know what it means. Do I think they're going to pull away and privatize? No, I don't. I mean, I, I don't, how do you do that? Where they're no longer associated with the university, they're just sort of contracted out as some sort of a club team, and then the rest of the, the, rest of the sports on campus, what would the incentive be for the conferences to do that? What's the point? Why would the TV people go, okay, well, uh, you know what, we'll, we'll continue to show softball and stuff. No, I mean, they're just like, what are you doing? I mean, it, well, they show that because they just need the window right. and the hours. But but some of it's, con- you know, let's be real. Some of the stuff they show is because they have to show it. Yeah, sure. I mean. I don't know. I've just gotten word, wake me up when it's over and tell me how it went. Oh, look. You still got all these court cases running through over the next 18 months. Everybody in athletic and university administrations across the conference think it is the most critical court situation. And we don't, I mean, this is in a way a credit to us. We don't know what the hell we're talking about, so we can't do in depth on that because I'm not an attorney. Right. So, I mean, me going, hey, let me tell you, here's what's going to happen in the eighth precinct in California. I don't freaking know. I know people who think it's going to be catastrophic. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's it's you just sit and wait because you have no other choice. Because, look, there's already movement on that. I mean, the NCAA came out last week and basically said, yeah, 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 you'll just transfer. Like, you got you to go by the windows. But as far as how many times you transferred and stuff, no, it's, 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 it's a rule from us now. You're good. Go ahead. Go do what you want. And that's all because of the injunctions in West Virginia and mm-hmm. whatever. Is it Tennessee? 
whatever state it is. Whatever, yeah. Pennsylvania, I don't know, whatever. There's two states. Kentucky, I think. Sure. Maybe it's Tennessee. Whatever. Know, whatever, it doesn't matter. Yeah, that's why. They were, they were losing in court. Judge had made a rule. The schools were already following the injunction definition. So the incident goes, oh, yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah. Sweet. Because they can't win a court case right now. They went from winning every court case to winning no court cases. Yeah. Because they used to just roll in court. I sure. mean, just well, the, the shift sh- shifted in 2020 to pro, to the athlete. Pro player. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Literally pro player. I mean, we'll see. But yeah, I mean, Seth, it's a new angle. Okay. Yeah. I'm fine. Doesn't sound realistic. I haven't, I haven't read it. But. We're, well, we're using a lot of digital digital ink because we have to write something. Mm-hmm. And it's a topic people get very worked up about in one direction or another. So yeah. here's 600 words on said topic. I yeah. mean, this is not. It is April 17th, and he's a college football writer. Yeah. Again, I'm not criticizing. Yeah, so no, I know. I'm, just, I'm explaining to people yeah. why that column even exists today. Yeah. Is it? Hey, he said, hey, it says we need something. Okay, cool. Sweet. Yeah. I got something. When Top Meyer for USA Today or Gannett or whatever goes, hey, we're going to rank the 12 media mills. And you go, why? Ah, because it's February the 8th and something's got to go in that slot tomorrow. So here's what it is. Mm. Woo. Yeah. Fun. Uh, we got a couple minutes. Uh, last, uh, any just final lingering thought on Grove Bowl? You obviously wrote about it. Spring, just anything you have not said already? No, nope. I thought it was brilliant. I think you'll see other schools start to do it now. There's no incentive to play a real game in April. I mean, you'll you'll see the fan bases like Alabama comes to mind. Is hey, we're gonna brag about packing a stadium. Cool, awesome, whatever. Is anyone other than Phil still mad? Is he, he literally the only one? He's the only one that I've seen worked up yelling at the clouds. Grumpy old man. Yeah. Yeah. You're starting to get a clue. So you build, He wanted it for his magazine. You build your whole magazine around spring games. Whoa. That brings in the question. Whoa. I got questions now. Because um, that's what it was. He needed it. Yeah. He was going to watch it. He was going to evaluate players based off of spring games. And depth charts. Yeah. Which kind of proves Lane's point. I mean, it does. It does. 100%. I mean, some of it's unavoidable. Josh Harris is leaving because it wasn't going to be ready, readily made playing time for him. He needed to go somewhere where he could play if he had any lingering fantasy about playing in the National Football League. If anyone, I mean, if, if anything comes to fruition with any of this offensive line talk, it's because nobody wants to be the sixth or seventh dude. Yeah, the one thing that I think you see from the portal, big picture-wise, Mm-hmm. is depth is just going to be a luxury for, for anybody. Yeah, I just don't know that many guys, and maybe th- this is to Seth's point, I just don't know that too many guys who want to play professionally are going to go, okay, well, you know what, I'm going to wait my turn. Not really, not really culture anymore either. You don't like your spot on a seven on seven team you go to a new seven on seven team you don't like your spot on a travel baseball team you go to a new travel baseball team you don't like your spot at a soccer club you go to a new soccer club you just shift you don't like your high school you go to a new high school i mean there's guys that are going to multiple high schools that never leave their house here's the thing on that i'm on phil Steele's twitter account okay so here's what he said about Ole Miss. Just watched the Ole Miss spring game. Got very little out of it. Dunk contest, tug of war, hot dog eating, obstacle course, no pads, seven on seven flag football game, 50 yard field. Not worth watching. Don't waste your time. Okay. Feels very angry. Very angry. Beating the table. Just watched the Boston College spring game. Great job as always by Mark Heslick and Mark something who broke down each position. Lots of individual player notes from spring practices. Just watched the Pitt spring game. On the call with lots of player notes from spring practice, good position breakdowns. Watch the Florida State game. Dealing with lots of individual player notes from spring practice, position breakdowns. Good to see quarterback Lagway and some of the talented freshmen in front of a crowd. Mm. Watch the Penn State spring game. Plenty of player notes from spring, good position breakdowns. Abdul Carter, blah, 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 blah. I feel safely in saying that there's something Phil Steele hasn't done in a very long time. <laughs> there you go. Been a, it's been a minute. 
He was really excited that Georgia did some one on ones, some one versus ones oh, in their too. spring game. Me too was excited. Because I bet Kirby was scheming that shit up. Oh, I mean, I bet he was exotic blitzes. It's this dude's supposed to be a football mind. It's always wait, 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 hold on a minute. Whoa, 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 whoa. This guy's supposed to be a football mind. And he thought the position stuff in a spring game was relevant. Well, it just shows you. I mean, it really pulls the pulls the cover back off some stuff. He needs those spring games because he's he's on his deadline now. But like, how do you even do? You're putting your magazine together now, dude. There might the rosters might, the pit roster will probably look different in May than it looked during their spring game. Mm-hmm. Pitt's gonna have dudes get in the portal. They're gonna bring guys out of the portal. Lane said the quiet part out loud over the over the, the the course of the spring. The game's always been meaningless. It always has been. There have been people who've tried to make Phil still comes to mind who have tried to make meaning out of it. It it never had meaning. It's a spring game. It's April. Ole Miss is going to play at least twelve games in the fall. Those are the games that matter. They'll keep score. Nobody ever looks back. At least nobody that I know with a, a margin of sanity and goes, you know, there were some signs of this back in the spring, in the spring game specifically. No, there weren't. It's an exhibition game that gets played because it's always been played. Coaches play it because, well, the other coaches are going to play it. I give Lane an absolute ton of credit for this because there will be someone in a world where they go seven and five. Who goes, well, they just weren't physical in the spring and it it really came to fruition. In September? If the spring is so freaking important, then why do you need all the, the, the preseason camp? It's a totally different era. Lane admitted it out loud to his credit. What's, and doesn't like the era. But what's but coming. But has what's, to do with but, it. But I mean, from a spring standpoint, you have the, everybody's on campus now the whole summer. You're going to do seven on seven all summer. You're going to do, they can actually, the coaches can put their hands on the players, if you will, in the summer. Yeah. They're going to get, June and July are far more important than March and April. And then August, they're going to have a grueling first two weeks of camp. They always have. And then he'll start to, start to tear it, he'll start to wind it down a little bit. He'll get the guy's legs back under them. And they'll start the season. And by the end of the season, they're hardly practicing. And it's not because they don't want to practice. It's because he understands the, the, the science of protecting bodies. And this year, with the possibility of playing 16 games, you really have to think about that. You can't just grind guys into the ground. There won't be anything left in December when you might have an on-campus game against Ohio State. We should, we should give Phil Still and Chris Landry a podcast. Let Oof, them just talk. Dude. Break it down. Wow. Wow. Just call it color by numbers. They yeah. each get their thing. This team has seven yellow guys. Eight green guys. Look out. Ooh, four blue guys. Look, and it's the challenge in the portal. Full circle, and we're going to break. We'll come back. So while sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, is that, yes, if somebody said the lack of adversity. Yes, a lot of players just go, by God, I'm not getting what I want, and I'm leaving. Mm-hmm. Which ones, though, when you get them, can you coach hard? Can you get on? Can they handle something? Or are they going to go, nah, you got a sugar it, or I'm out. I, I'm soft, and that's where we're moving. And that's the question. Cause, yeah. And then, you know, what promises did you make to guys? Did you bring in a, did you bring in a good player from a, from a bad team, and he comes to a good team, and he's not the good player that you thought he was? Yeah. That happens like... All the time. All the time. Like in, when, when I, I remember being a kid in, in Louisiana, you know, the rule was you had to take two players off every team for the all-star team. Now, usually that was the dad's, the coach's kids. But sometimes the best player on the worst team wasn't one of the best 15 players in the league. Mm-hmm. It just was what it was. But here we go. All right, some baseball, some football coming up. Prime Shrimp, primeshrimp.com. A lot of different flavors available for you. Everything from their newest option, that's the soy ginger. It's great with hibachi dishes, proteins, vegetables, rice. Throw it all together. 
makes a great dinner. I know there's not a, t- a lot of time right now. You got a lot of stuff going on. You got all the youth sports happening. Summer right around the corner. So let Prime Shrimp help you out. We're going to help you out with that. You can use code RG, buy five pouches more, get all your favorites or a little bit of sample of all of it. 25% off. Again, they deliver directly to your door. You're in the 10 minutes freezer to play with Prime Shrimp. So again, use code RG, buy five pouches more, primeshrimp.com. Are you retiring soon? How long should you wait to take Social Security? What accounts should you pull from first? Are you already retired? Should you consider Roth conversions? These are just some of the questions that can only be answered with the personalized retirement income plan. Andrew Sego with Sego Wealth Management specializes in helping folks just like you come up with their retirement game plan. Whether you meet at his office in Collierville or prefer Zoom from anywhere, schedule a free discovery meeting. See what they can do for you at rebelsretire.com. Brought to you by Comer Heating and Air, Southern Air Conditioning and Heating, different names, same great people, products, and services. If you live in Oxford, Tupelo, Batesville, or the surrounding area, call Comer, 662-801-1777. If you live in Hernando, Memphis, or the surrounding area, call Southern, 662-429-4429. The College Corner is uh, in Oxford now. If you're coming up for a baseball series here in the last uh, portion of the season, or you're starting to get ready for uh, the upcoming football season, make the College Corner one of your stops. They have two locations in the Jackson area, one in Oxford, right off of uh, Sisk Avenue. Plenty of parking available. Their staff's going to have you in and out, ready for the Grove in no time. More than 4,000 square feet of the best Rebel gear. It's collegecornerstore.com. Remind me to circle back to that. They've got a uh, football giveaway that I need to tell you about okay. in, in a minute at the College Corner. So I'll get to that uh, a little later in the show. We're also brought to you by uh, Argent Wealth. Uh, Argent Wealth is based in Ridgeland, Mississippi. Clients in more than 20 states. They provide detailed, specialized investment management, financial planning, retirement planning for individuals and businesses, and much, much more. At Argent, investing is treated like a commodity. Decisions are made using objective information and research, not emotions. Regardless of your level of wealth, uh, Argent will uh, sit down with you. Listen to your goals, study your expenses, put forth a comprehensive, detailed financial and retirement plan built just for you. Uh, at Argent, uh, they're, they're going to take care of you individually. So go to myargentwealth.com. And we're brought to you by John Edwards, Regency Travel Incorporated in Memphis. I called John just the other day. We're already starting to talk about a uh, family vacation for next summer, not this one coming up. The key thing was I gave him a budget. Gave him some ideas, and then I just sat back waiting for him to give me some uh, details and for him to tell me, here's what you can do with that budget. So I um, recommend that you do the same thing. Give him a, give him parameters. Give him a budget. Let him give you some options. You don't have to live in or near Memphis to take advantage of his services. It's 901-494-3387 or send him an email at jedwards at regencytravel.net. So... Jump into baseball for a uh, a few minutes. Again, Ole Miss knocks off Mississippi State two out of three over the weekend. They back ended the uh, the series. They lost um, in, a, in a kind of a route shutout on Friday night, and then uh, came back from a four run deficit in the eighth inning on Saturday. They scored a single run to uh, keep it going, and I guess the eleventh, and then won it in the twelfth with a uh, two run single from uh, Jackson Ross after uh, Mississippi State had hit a home run in the top half from uh, the catcher, Long, who then was um, celebrating a little bit, bat flipped a little bit, Mike thrown out at that point. Um, and then on Sunday, Ole Miss, just kind of riding on Mason Nichols, was excellent for uh, six and two-thirds, no, six and one-third. And then uh, they've been on 14-2, scoring a lot of runs there in that seven-inning game to uh, clinch it. Georgia and Mr. Charlie Condon up next for the uh, the Rebels. Condon, again, we'll talk about him later in the week. We'll uh, have uh, – more on him as he's the best player in the country and almost has got to figure out how to approach it which is don't let him beat you just walk his ass yep. is the answer to that um we can get more detailed if you'd like to try to play games but the answer is don't throw him things he can hit out of the ballpark he's because a, he will he's an elite hitter he's incredible i mean he really is yeah, again his his batting average is higher than his babip right now which means he hits a lot of home runs he doesn't strike out if you told me he's hitting in the major leagues at some point next season, I completely buy it. He's chasing Dave Magadan down or trying for the uh, all-time batting average record in SEC um, action. So, yeah, that's Charlie Condon. But anyway, the Rebels coming off the state series, a series they had to have to have any shot of a conversation moving forward. Now, look, we'll see. They go to Georgia. They haven't played well on the road. I think they're 4-8 and eight 
on the road at this point this season. Um, yeah, they are four and eight. Georgia's been really good. I think Georgia's only lost one home game all year, if I have that right. Um, at this point, it's I one can, or two. I can pull it up. It's okay. I think it's one. So Saturday they didn't play well. They won a baseball game. Give them credit for coming back. They didn't lay down. All those things. Mm-hmm. Sunday they played well. So. I guess I'm tempering expectations and saying they did what they had to do when their back was 100% against the wall to try to survive here. I think given the metrics and some metrics I'm going to go over in a second, eight and seven gets them in the rest of the way. Yeah. Now don't do dumb stuff in the non-con because it does suddenly matter because you already lost six of them. Mm-hmm. But in general, if you'll just don't be an idiot in the non-con, that's why I think that rain out was good last night. I'll get to why in a minute. Um, well, their RPI is good. So 13 SEC wins means their RPI is going to probably stay roughly where it is right now, and that's going to get them in. In general, 13-win teams get in about 40% of the time, yeah. but a 28 RPI is good. Yeah, and they get in. I think. Um, LSU has gotten left, left out with a 27 RPI at 13 wins before. North Carolina got left out at 17 in the RPI a couple years ago. Whew. Yeah. Um, there's been some weird stuff because it's like all other committees. They are selective on what teams really the RPI matters and which teams the RPI didn't mean shit. So mm-hmm. just point is you put yourself in a position, but it's going to require that to even be put in a position. 12 wins is not getting you in the conversation. No, look, Texas you probably a- ought to win the governor's cup too. Texas A&M still on your schedule, which is good and bad. Well, I mean, but from a getting to 13, yeah, you can't count on any of those. They're the best team in the country. They're good. Um, you have to at least factor in the possibility that you're going to lose a home series there. Because quite frankly, if you offered a one and two against the Aggies right you now, it. you'd have to take it because zero and three is on the table. Yeah. Um, so that means do the math on that. That means so eight and four. Now you're having to really get going. So twenty and sixteen overall, not good. Um, Mike's at, outside of last year when they were twenty five and twenty nine. Mike's worst regular season ever was 30 and 25. So they're definitely kind of on that pace a little mm-hmm. right now. From that standpoint, uh, they are again five and ten in the SEC. Eight and seven would get them to 13 and 17. They have a 28 RPI. They are being bolstered right now by the number three strength of schedule in the country. Mm-hmm. And there's lots of good teams left. You're going to be fine on a strength of schedule standpoint. And then here, I think this is what's caused because I was I was kind of looking at it and go, God, they lost twice to Hawaii and they lost to High Point. And I've seen some Ole Miss teams with better resumes with worse RPIs. Like, what's causing this? And it's a couple different things. But the main goal of this is their non-con RPI is 76, which is not awful. It's okay. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Top 100. You're an SEC team, so your non-con is automatically going to be less than a lot of teams that play those SEC teams. Mm-hmm. And then they have the uh, number – sorry, sorry, I was wrong. Number 30, non-conference RPI. Number 76, non-conference strength of schedule. Okay. Yeah. Good good numbers. Mm-hmm. Here's where it's cooking. Is they've played a ton of top 25 games already. 12. They're 3-9, and nine, but you got three them, wins. A lot of them on the road. 12 games. They've played one game in 26 to 50, so 13 top 50 games to date. And then here, sure, they've lost six of them. They're 13 and six against 100 to 200. That's not a great stat. That's not a great resume. Six losses outside the top 100 is not good. But this one, one and oh against 200 plus. They've only played one game against 200 plus. Now you have another one coming with UAB, I mean, sorry, uh, UNA, but it will only be two barring this. And when I say that for context, here are the number of plus 200 games other SEC teams have played. Okay. Uh, let's see. Bama, six. Vandy, five. Carolina, five. Georgia, seven. Uh, Tennessee, eight. Arkansas, five. Kentucky, five. A&M, five. Auburn, seven. Uh, Let's see. LSU, six. State, eight. And somebody, three. Vanderbilt, I think. I can't read my handwriting. Um, That's a ton. Yeah. So you only played one. Yeah. That's going to help you in immeasurable ways that you haven't played the crap teams. Agreed. So as you're looking at this thing, Arkansas State's 182. You didn't need to play that game last night. No, you benefited from rain. Hawaii 132. You're cool. They're not falling below 200. The Warriors are actually pretty decent. Mm-hmm. High point 164. You need to pull for them the rest of the way. Yeah. They can't fall below 200 on you because that's three games. Okay. They played a weekend against them. Little Rock 136. You're good. Missouri yeah. State 125. You're good. Yeah. Memphis 161. Stay above 200. I think it's important here. Moorhead State, 167. Don't go crazy. 
Because again, they're going to play plot conference games where they start playing dog opponents. Mm -hmm. So you got to make sure they win those. I mean, you really, if you're going to, if you're going to, if you're going to scoreboard watch, don't scoreboard watch the SEC. Scoreboard watch the non cons to make sure they don't do something really stupid and screw you up. Um, Murray State 59. That was actually a game you're going to get back maybe because it was postponed. That'll help. Yeah. Um, you need to, Ole Miss needs to play Murray State, as weird as that sounds. Mm -hmm. You need to play that game and win it. Again, UNA is 272. Stop playing them. Stop playing them. Stop playing them. It killed a basketball season once. It did. Well, the season was going to die anyway. But <laughs> it yes. just happened to be the knife wound that, that went straight into the catch. Just, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, State and Trustmark. State's RPI is down at 57. They're not helping you as much as you'd like for the Bulldogs to help you out right now. No, but not hurting you either. No, it's yeah. fine. Uh, Southern Miss, 46 in Hattiesburg. That's a positive for you. Mm -hmm. And then in SEC play, LSU, 48. God, the Tigers have just scuffled. Mm -hmm. A&M, number one in the RPI. Auburn at 35. Alabama at 23. And Georgia at 10. So, big opportunity on the road this weekend against the Bulldogs there at number so, I mean, Alabama comes in next weekend. Uh, that's correct. No, Twenty-three double decker weekend. Alabama in town for uh for three at that uh at that juncture. So yeah, I just was looking at that and thought, hey, the two hundred thing is kind of interesting because it just wasn't making sense. I, I could not figure out why it was it was where it was at that uh at that point. So anyway, uh, SEC records just quickly here as I'm uh doing this and we're on the discussion again. We're at the halfway point of the uh the conference season mike has only had one season it was last year that he didn't win at least 13 new era but just pointing that out and then um only one year at 13 as well everything else has been 14 or more arkansas winning the sec west at 12 and 3 right now the aggies are really good they're 11 and 4 one game back mississippi state 7 and 8 mm, we'll see yeah I, I, they gotta get going. and they've got to get to 14 yeah they're not getting in at 13 with a 50 RPI. Right. So they got to get hot. I think, I, th I think they have to get to 14 Alabama six and nine. I think they're on the way down a little bit. I don't know. They need, I know they took two out of three bar. Their RPI is really it. good. No, I think they're going to get in. Yeah. But I don't see that as this. Un it's a series you have to win. If you're oh, getting yeah. to eight, Yo, for sure. you got to beat Alabama at home next week. For sure. Uh, Ole Miss five and 10 LSU three and 12. Yeah. They're, and then LSU's in trouble. They're cooked. Good trouble. And then Auburn two and 13. They're done. It's. Auburn will not be a couple hours e west Auburn, toward Birmingham. Auburn is is that record is indicative of how hard the league is. I mean, you have a, you have an elite coach who could get if, if it if, is not hurting mm. Butch Thompson's candidacy with other programs. No, just it's, it's, the league's hard. Yeah, I mean it really is. It's it's a hard league to to win. You go to Tuscaloosa, and you can get beat. I mean, you go to there's just it, the league's look LSU's three and twelve. The league's hard. Butch maximizes teams that have pulses. But there's nothing you can do with teams that don't have pulses. No. And just because I think he went nine and twenty one a couple years ago. It's just, and just it's just hard. And then what has thrown this entire thing into a blender is the Kentucky Wildcats are fourteen mm -hmm. and one in the SEC. And fun to watch. I love their identity. They know exactly who they are. They're not Uber talented, but they don't suck by any stretch of the imagination. If you're someone like me who's not just crazy about college baseball, Kentucky's, fun. Kentucky's sort of your team. They're fun. Mingione has pulled it back just enough. You don't hate him. Yeah. Like, he's just kind of fun. He's not Vitello annoying right now. No, not at all. I, no, they play with this real. So they like, were in town, and I kind of went, I sort of like their program right now. They play with a real spirit. Like You see it. Yeah. But it's not over the top. It's not obnoxious. It's no. more like cheering for each other kind of thing. And they play a style that gets on your nerves, but sure. you got to handle it. Yeah. Now, I said really fundamental teams, they could run into some problems. But yeah. if you give them an opening. Well, shit, they've given boom. themselves a runway. All they got to do is about go 5 and 10 the rest of the way, and they're hosting. Oh, and hell, that's fine. That's what I mean. It's 19 and 11. That's what I mean. Yeah. 5 and 10 gets them the 19 wins. They go 6 and 9, they get 20 wins. They've created themselves. They got all sorts of runway. Two game lead in the overall standings as well, as we uh, as we said. Tennessee ten and five. They're fine. Um, the balls are going to be hell in a regional and a super regional at home, and then we'll see when you get them in a bigger ballpark where they can't just bash their way through. They're inside uh, Lindsey Nelson Stadium. Vanderbilt and South Carolina both tied at eight and seven at the uh, midway mark. What? Just, just reading this chat. 
You never know who's going to pop in. Thank you, Rebecca. That's very nice. Whoever you are. Oh, that's yeah. nice. That's very nice. Yeah. Spreading joy and it's grace this grace morning. Grace and prayers and uh, <laughs> peace. Yeah. Georgia, 7-8, and eight, speaking of. Big weekend for the Bulldogs against Ole Miss. You know, look, both teams get to play here. Yep. Georgia's going to have this circled because they got to have it from the other side. Yeah, no, they need to. Again, their RPI is great, but in their minds, they're going, hey, could we get to 16 and host? Mm-hmm. Can we can we find a way to 16? And their path to 16 would be through Ole Miss, obviously. Yeah, their path to 16 is probably a sweep. Yeah, we, we got to get some momentum and get yeah. going here. They would like to leave it 10-8. and eight. Um, Florida, I don't know, 7-8. and eight. I was wrong. I don't know. I mean, their roster is not this bad. But what happens, and it's the negative to Kevin O'Sullivan, is that he runs hot 100% of the time. And he's not the touchy-feely dude that's going to pull your team back in once they're going down the cliff a little bit. You're all falling off together. Again, man, the league's hard. Yeah. Like, you watch if you watch a lot of league games, and I think a lot of people that are – this is not meant as an insult. A lot of people in the stream, they just watch Ole Miss games. If you watch me in a lot of the other games, there's a lot of games that have come down to one inning, one half inning, an at bat here, an at bat there. It's it's really close. You can you can run into some bad luck, not not execute with your bullpen a little bit, and suddenly a team that should be nine and six is six and nine. That's easy to do. And then Missouri's five and ten, but they're two and ten outside of playing Florida. Yeah. They do play hard. I'll give them that. Sure. They're fine. They're actually kind of fine. They don't suck. No, they don't suck. Well, offensively, they suck. They pitch it well. They're okay. It's kind of Alabama. Alabama pitches it pretty well. They don't have a great lineup. They pitch it pretty well. I mean, that's like, I know it was kind of smart, snarky, but I was curious at the same time. I had that mailbag question last week, is Ole Miss better than Missouri? And I went, well, let me look at the stats. And offensively, no, because they're better than no one. But on the mound, yeah, definitely. They don't walk anybody. Yeah. No, they're solid. They make you beat them. Most people can beat them because Missouri doesn't score many runs. No, 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 no. It was like 14th in everything. Yeah. Uh, since it's already Wednesday – Go ahead and knock this out. We'll look at the uh, the weekend of games. Let's see. Thursday. Or what do we have on Thursday? Any games? Yeah, two games. Texas A&M at Alabama is on Thursday. Aggies get two. Yeah, I like that. Aggies get two. Alabama coming off that uh, tough two-game stretch. You get Arkansas, Texas A&M back-to-back weeks, but they get two from the Razorbacks. And Arkansas is susceptible. They just play really good baseball, and you have to beat them, but you can beat them. Yeah, they don't. They They're not have, unbeatable they by don't any have a ton stretch of offense. Imagination. They really pitch well. Yeah. They pitch themselves and stay. They in. don't give it to you. They stay in every game. And then if Florida's got a pulse left, they're in Nashville facing Vanderbilt this weekend. I think the doors mm. get two. I mean, I can't. Yeah, I, I'll say Vanderbilt gets two. I can't give Florida. And if you told me Vanderbilt swept them, I'm not surprised. You think they're in the tank? I think Vanderbilt's really good. Yeah. And Florida's kind of in the tank. Okay. Ole Miss and Georgia. I just think Georgia gets two. I do too. I, I can't. I, you're going to have to show me more than one. You're going to have to show me more than a game and a half, I guess, would be the way that you put it. Ole Miss, again, played really well on Sunday. They are seeming to – I think they have a bunch of Saturday pitchers. Colin Brister said that earlier on the network a few weeks ago, and he's exactly right. Like, they don't have an ace, but I think they do have three Saturday arms. Mm-hmm. So, you just see if you can kind of piece that together. Their issue right now is that they don't have a reliable arm in the bullpen necessarily. It's what I was frustrated with Mike a little bit from just a game management standpoint. It's like he went to Morrell early in the weekend in a game they were not probably going to win at the moment. And you went, what are you doing? Like, because you're wasting your one arm. It's kind of been whatever. Because, you know, like I said, Mallet's off speed has not been up to velocity. Connor Spencer was really good, and you just had to stretch the hell out of him on Saturday night. It's a it's a bit of a task right now to figure out how to, uh, how to put that together. And then – Really good series in Lexington this week. The Tennessee Volunteers in town to face Kentucky. So Tennessee, Kentucky this weekend. Oh, yeah. I actually think Kentucky's going to give t- Kentucky its first loss. I mean, sorry, Tennessee. Oh, I, okay. I, I got the balls for two. I know it's on the road, which is kind of dumb because Tennessee's a totally different team. But at this point, even if you're Kentucky, you get one, you're fine. That's what I mean. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you walk out of it fifteen and three. Nothing wrong with that. And I get that Mingione is calmed. There will be some semblance of a fight over the course of the weekend. Oh. Okay. Those two teams, yeah. At some point in the three games, somebody's going to get a little run, a little hot. Tennessee's a little fiery. Yeah. Yeah. 
Because Mingione's not going to just let hit the Tennessee group do the stuff. So just Auburn's at Mississippi State. Bulldogs better get them. I mean, and probably will. Yeah, would soon. Yeah, now State's okay. Yeah. They're okay. They're okay. Hard as hard be- as I'll go. They're better than Auburn right now. Oh yeah. Yeah. Arkansas's at South Carolina. Opportunity for the Gamecocks. Yeah. South Carolina needs to get a couple. You're eight and seven at the break. Got Arkansas in town. And then Arkansas's deal is that you just you can beat them. You have to execute like Alabama did. You have to execute all weekend because they're going to pitch their way into every game. Mm-hmm. And then and the way that Smith's pitching, you're you're not getting the first one. So you got to back end it. And that's Smith's been terrific for them consistently. And South Carolina has to get a little better than what they've been. They are the worst team in the conference in situational hitting. Runners on scoring position, runners on base. They do not do it well that at all. That is not how you beat Arkansas. Yeah. They waste a ton of opportunities. Yeah, that's not. You're not going to get them a ton. So not how you do that. And then a series that I have no freaking idea, LSU's at Missouri. I don't know. Uh, I mean, I'm going to give LSU's two, but I'm being stubborn. Well, I admit it. I mean, I, I won't don't be shocked know. at all. If Missouri wins two there. Yeah. LSU's not playing well. They're not. If you did, if you watched them play and the uniform said something besides LSU, you'd be like, oh, that's just not a good team. You still look at the uniform and go, oh, it's LSU. Okay. But they're not very good. You don't get to 3-12 and 12 by accident. People keep asking me a lot, why is – what are the similarities between these three national champions and what's happened? I don't know that there's a ton of similarities. I think everybody's got their own stuff. It's really hard. It's really hard to win a championship. It's it's almost impossible to defend a championship. And I do think there's something to again, it was it's a middle ground, okay? It's not an excuse. Mm-hmm. There is something to being in freaking Omaha until July sure. and not out doing portal and sure. getting that done. Sure. Somebody's going to combust and go, ah, you're making excuses. No, it just, no, it's human it's nature. just different. You're in Omaha for two weeks, two and a half weeks in June. You're not really thinking about the portal. You're thinking about winning a championship. Mm-hmm. Your meeting time is not focused on portal guys. And if it is, it's not really because you're not really thinking about it. You're really thinking about that game with Texas in tomorrow night. That's what you're really thinking about. They're humans. Mm-hmm. You're around kids and parents and family, and everybody's not, hey, what did you think about that shortstop at Cal Poly? You're kind of thinking about how do we get that you're shortstop. You're getting nobody on campus. I mean, how do we yeah. get the kid from Texas out tomorrow night? Yeah. Yeah, it just is what it is. It's just human. Yeah. And it's hit all three of them to some extent. Yeah, sure. In well, different ways because the portal has been different. All well, because the seasons. rest of the close league is out recruiting the portal. And the yeah. difference. The, the margin. Di- the difference between winning a championship and finishing fourth. Was Ole Miss considerably better than Auburn in 2022? No. 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 Auburn went to Oregon State and beat the Beavers two out of three. I mean, or name me a team in 2022 that lost a Super Regional. Was Oregon State. Was Ole Miss considerably better than them? Of course not. But they're out working the portal at that point. Yeah. TCU. I mean, I was thinking about SEC teams, yeah, but sure. yeah, right. You know, I mean, the answer is no. There's not a lot of difference. Hell, Tennessee it's, lost in a super regional that year. So was was Ole Miss considerably better than Tennessee better in twenty twenty two? Yeah, of course not. So Tennessee was out working the portal. Yeah. You're in Omaha for half a month. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's just And then after you win, you've got the hangover for well, look because the margins back to that Ole Miss last year at 25 and 29 was not a bad national college baseball team they were a crappy SEC baseball team yeah they went eight and one against the Big Ten <clears throat> I know not the same thing but that's my point yeah yeah just it's LSU spent a lot of time last year and then it ends and and all the attention to schemes and all that stuff you got stuff going on and you look up and you you lost a month and I'm sure that – I'm sure they were looking at – Jay Johnson was working the portal yeah, and stuff, sure. but, you, but your heart's not in it. Yeah. You're trying to win a championship. You're trying to maximize the actual point. Well, it's what you've dreamed of. You, yeah. don't, you don't get into it dreaming of, hey, we're going to win this portal battle to get the second baseman from Pacific. Yeah. No, you, 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 you want to win a championship. 
Pacific. It's good. It's hard to win a championship. Yeah. Or in this case, hey, you know, but there's this outfielder in Air Force. We're yeah. really focused. No, you're thinking about we play Texas A&M tomorrow in a national, what is essentially a national semifinal game. Yeah. What, you know, the the coaches at the final four in basketball, the, the portal's going on. You want to tell me those guys are really thinking about the portal that day? No, Give Hurley me. said he was avoiding it. I mean, Nate Oates wasn't thinking about the portal when he was getting ready to play UConn. Yeah. He was trying to think, is there any way we could do this? Yeah. Podcast brought to you in part by G&M Pharmacy, 662-236-2222. They deliver locally in the Oxford area, and they offer medicine. Free prescriptions the same day each month and take care of you. One trip to the pharmacy, one delivery. You have everything you need when you need it with G&M. So whether you're in Holly Springs with Tyson Drugs or G&M in Oxford, let them transfer your medications easily. One phone call, they take care of the rest. Again, that is 662-236-2222. I said I would mention this, uh, the College Corner if you uh, go to the College Corner store in Oxford and you leave a tip, the tip is going to go uh, straight to the Grove Collective uh, to benefit Ole Miss Athletics. It's also going to make you eligible to win a uh, Grove Collective football signed by Lane Kiffin. The promotion ends on May the 15th, so you've got about, about a month to do that at the College Corner, the Oxford location. Uh, we're also brought to you by our friends at Service Specialist. Service Specialist Staffing and Recruiting Agency, connecting great job opportunities to candidates since 1967. If you're on the job hunt, uh, whether you're seeking an entry-level position or you're a seasoned professional, they have opportunities across the board. It's always free for the candidate. If your company is looking to hire quality, hard-to-find talent, Service Specialist can help you as well. The payment of service solely contingent on if you decide to hire a candidate that they send. You've got nothing to lose, so give Will, Sydney, or Kelsey a call at 601 601- Five seven three nine two four two, or um, go to their website, service specialist ltd.com. Oxford's new uh, Greek restaurant on the square, Opa, is the uh, perfect place to plan your um, fabulous uh, festive party event, your company dinner. If you're even thinking ahead to a Christmas party, they've got that as well. Uh, fabulous food, great craft libations. They can accommodate up to 200 guests at Opa. If for catering or booking information, contact Jeannie, 601-421-7147. Uh, get the beautiful and healthy smile you deserve at Corinth Dental. Dr. Bubba McQueen, Dr. Jenny Beth Hendrick are devoted to restoring and enhancing the natural beauty of your smile using conservative, state-of-the-art procedures that will result in a beautiful, long-lasting smile. Uh, from routine checkups to advanced treatment, including implants and Invisalign, Corinth Dental is here to help you achieve your smile goals. Uh, schedule your appointment today. Take the first step toward a better version of yourself at CorinthDental.com. Are you a displaced corporate executive wanting to put uh, your career in your own hands? Are you an experienced entrepreneur looking to diversify? Either way, Andy Ludicky can help. He uh, is a diehard college football fan, franchise veteran, owns multiple franchises and businesses, uses his expertise to help others find their American dream through a very thorough and free consultation process. So call Andy, put your life and your career in your own hands. It's 100% free, nothing to lose. MyPerfectFranchise.net, Andy at MyPerfectFranchise.net, or call him at 404-973-9901. Just one quick thing back about the kind of the business of um, college athletics. I saw this was interesting. This is uh, Fox Sports President Bob Thompson. And we already mentioned that this was dumb, and he's just we finally have somebody in a in a admin capacity that's going to put literal words to it. This the 70, 10, 70 team super league that everybody keeps asking about, uh -huh. which is really stupid. Yeah, in a number of ways, um, he says wonders, but he's not wondering. He knows the Big Ten and the SEC would even have any interest in that that is being considered by whoever the whoever it is. Says uh, this version was designed by folks on the outside trying to figure out how to get inside also no one has given thought about how this gets paid for with the current medium term me media distribution environment either it's a super league with a bunch of non-super teams which is a problem said the right model from economic economic standpoint is probably one that pisses off a bunch of people that brings in the politicians and the whole thing rolls right off a cliff and nothing happens economics of an 80 team league are not enough to properly compensate the 20 schools that actually drive the value Anyway, not one thing will happen until we sort out where all the future economics will come from, from a current distribution configuration, because we can't support this. And then he's made a couple of good points lately. Dennis Dodd pointing out realignment was or is all about consolidation. 
the pressure on the de- de- declining pay TV system, which still and probably will be in the future, covering 80% of the economics for tier one sports means distributors can only support realignment in leagues that over earn on strategic value to the general market. Sports fans still subscribe to pay TV saying that there isn't room for the super, for a super league that isn't filled with super teams from top to bottom. So yeah. again, this was all done by the other teams going, Hey, let us in. Hey, here, here's the deal. What about this? Give this a shot. And the other thing was going, ah, I'm good. No, 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 thanks. All, all fine at that juncture. We're 100 days away from the Olympics, Mr. McCready. You interested at all? Not really. Not at all? I mean. Was there a time? Yeah, probably when I was a kid. And when it's on, there might be an event here and there that I'll be interested in. But no, not really. Summer or winter, your favorite? I think the winter ones are more fun to watch. Do you? Yeah. People flying down a mountain. (laughs) You like the bobsled and the slaloms and all that stuff? Yeah, it's pretty crazy. Okay. Yeah, it's more, yeah. Downhill skiing. Even the hockey. Yeah. You know, I mean, I'll probably watch the basketball. There'll be a lot of international basketball is better than it's ever been. It'll be interesting to watch those kinds of players play. NBC doing a little different deal here. Uh, The president of the company said the opening ceremony would be more like the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade or New Year's Rockin' Eve than the similar solemn procession that has happened in the past. Kelly Clarkson and Peyton Manning are co-hosting alongside uh, Mike Tirico for your actual reporter person. Alex Cooper from the Call Her Daddy podcast is doing live viewing parties on Peacock during the uh, opening ceremonies. I didn't see that one coming no. uh, today. No. Uh, Snoop Dogg is being involved in this in some way, it appears. I mean, they're trying to make it pop culture. Yeah, sure. Or, sure, which no is problem. smart. Yeah, go for got it. Got no, no, no issues there. Um. Track and field trying to become, well, will become the first sport to put up prize money at the Olympics. Oh, the governing body said that uh, any uh, gold medals under its jurisdiction will receive fifty thousand dollars. Okay, so a little bit of uh, put in, uh, put in there. The uh, torch was lit in Greece and is starting its its, oh, its move on toward its Paris. Path to Paris, that is correct. When, when are the Olympics? July, August, hundred days. So do some math. Three months. June, July, August. I mean, May, June, July. So, yeah, so July, sometime late yeah. July. Okay. Something like that. I mean, I'm interested just because there's nothing else going on right then. You're like, yeah, sure. Fine. We'll have practice starting. No, Media true. days. We'll actually tackle to the ground then. Yeah. Well, maybe. I think it's debatable. A little. A little. Not much. July 26th to Sunday, uh, August 11th oh, okay. are the dates for the, All right. the Olympics. Okay. Yeah, we'll be pretty occupied most of that. Is U.S. going to win basketball? Mm, I don't know. Be close. Saw Lillard got the last spot. Oh, did he? I think I saw that. There's some good teams now. I mean, I don't know. Like Canada will be good. One hour ago, let's see. LeBron James headlines. Give me a roster. Give me a roster. Give me a roster. So. I hate they announced something like this. Just give me a roster. Quit yeah. going paragraph form. Well, this guy's on the team, and this, just, just list. Show the me the players. roster. Yeah, you can't find one. I'm gonna get it. Hold yeah, on. we're in this aggregate. I'm. I'm not going. Mm. We're in this aggregation world where we can't just list the damn thing. Mm-hmm. Got to have a certain number of words. Okay, NBC News helped me. Congratulations. Okay. Thank you, NBC News. Mm-hmm. LeBron James. He's good. Steph Curry. We're a little old so far. Kevin Durant. Yeah, we're old so far. Joel Embiid. Okay. Anthony Davis. Devin Booker. Okay. Anthony Edwards. Yeah, Ant's good. Jason Tatum. Okay. uh, Bam Adebayo. Tyrese Halliburton. Drew Holiday. And there's one spot, and I think Kawhi got it. I'm sorry, Willard got it, I think. I had it a second ago. I saw where someone said they should put Cooper Flag in that last spot. The women are contemplating adding Caitlin Clark. Well, they should. You want anybody to watch? Yeah, Kawhi got the last spot. Sorry, not Damien. Okay. Okay. Not Lillard. Kawhi. So, those people plus Kawhi. I wonder if uh, Luka and Jokic are going to play for their country. It would, right? 
Sometimes, but sometimes they just the wear and tear on your body. Gotta Especially shut. Jokic, he's not into playing a ton of basketball. I know SGA is going to play for Canada. Oh, they good? Yeah, are they sneaky yeah, good? They're pretty good. Well, he's there's five he players, helps. and when one of them <laughs> super elite, you got a shot. Yeah. Josh Giddy's going to play for the Australian team. Okay. So you're up on where all the Thunder players are yeah, heading sure, in for sure. Pray they don't get hurt, kind of thing. Wait, uh, Warriors dynasty over? We done? Yeah, it's over. That's it. Last night killed it for sure. Be the last time they all play together. Clay will leave. Clay will leave. Draymond will be back. He's he, got three years left on a deal. He's back because of his deal. Yeah. Um. You know. Um. Steph's still there, but Steph's getting older. He's still an elite player. But yeah, they've they've been passed in the West. I mean, you saw it a lot. So Celtic um, in the East, we don't know yet. Celtics will play somebody. Mm-hmm. What we know now is the Lakers are the seven. They'll play Denver. Yes. And the winner of the New Orleans Sacramento game will play Oklahoma City as the, as the eight. Lakers beat the Pelicans one ten one oh four or something like that it's last night. Great night. game. And at the end, um, Zion Williamson got hurt. Hamstring. Bad. It looked to be a hamstring. Which means he will not play in the next one. It'd be hard. And he was having the best game of his career. He was phenomenal last night. So the East play in game is Heat somebody. Who's the Heat play? I saw this. Oh, Sixers. Heat Sixers. And Bulls Hawks are the two play ins in the East. Yes. That is correct. That's correct. Okay. Celtics won Knicks two. It's already set. Milwaukee three six, but apparently they're planning to play without Giannis for this three six. Can the Pacers get them? Can Indy if win? Giannis doesn't play at all. Yeah. Yeah. They could lose. You're really dependent on Damian Lillard at that point. Cleveland, Orlando in a 4-5. That'll be a great series. That'll be a, a lot of fun. Orlando's this fun young team that kind of gets overshadowed by Oklahoma City a little bit, but they're they're doing the same thing. And then as you said, Oklahoma City waiting on uh, New Orleans or somebody. The Thunder wanted the Lakers to win last night. They didn't want Big the Lakers. time. They don't want to play the Lakers. The, the Thunder have a matchup issue with the Lakers. And you so just it's Pels, Kings? Yeah. Okay. Thunder were thrilled last night. Oh, so the Kings aren't in yet, even though they won last night. No, they have to now yeah. beat the Pelicans in okay. New Orleans. In New Orleans. Mm-hmm. Okay. Nuggets, Lakers, as you said, that starts Saturday in Denver. T-Wolves, Suns, 3-6 matchup. Oh, it would be a lot of fun. And then Clippers, Mavericks should be great. Fantastic. I hope they play seven triple overtime games. Clippers finished the regular season one game in front, so they will have home field. And my home court is the four seed. And Dallas right now is playing. Lucas playing the best basketball of his career, and this is the best Dallas team that he's played on. It might not be enough, but they're really, really good. If somebody said one of those two teams won the title, you would go Clippers, right? I'm thinking. Yeah, probably. The the problem with the Clippers, man, is, I mean, and I love the guy, but you're really counting on Russell Westbrook to play well. You're really counting on it. As opposed to with Dallas, I mean, it's Kyrie and Luka. They could pull this off. No, I think I'd go Dallas if you told me one of them win the title. Really? And I don't think either one of them win the title. Yeah, 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 I get it. But you saw last night, I mean, like. But that 4-5 is a weird spot because you could – Kill each other. One of mm-hmm. you gets out, and then you get this Thunder team that's just still learning, and whatever is the one, and yeah. that's a huge break for the four or five to get the Thunder and not the Nuggets. And by the time you two, if you play the Thunder, by the time you play them, they're now an experienced playoff team. They've yeah. played playoff games. Yeah, and I can tell you after ever watching the Thunder all year, they're not going to be intimidated by the moment. That's just not who they are. That's not that's not the way they play. That's not their organizational thing. I mean, I'm not going to be the guy that makes a big deal out of winning the G League. But the fact that the Thunder organization won the G League with guys that are going to contribute to the team next season, you can't just completely ignore organizational synergy. Yeah, yeah, sure. They have lots of it. Mm -hmm. The whole stacking days on days, that's their motto. They just never really get rattled. 
They got blown out a few times, and then they'd come back and play well. Other teams get blown out too. I mean, Denver lost at San Antonio in the last weekend of the season. The Thunder down the stretch beat the living hell out of everybody. I think they lose in the second round, but look, I don't, I, I don't, gotta get them. I don't dismiss them. You don't win 57 games by accident. I mean, they're, they're good. That's what it was, 57. Yeah, they won 57 games. A year after winning 41, two years after winning 23 yeah. or 25. They yeah. improved 16 games in consecutive seasons. Yeah. Podcast brought to you in part by Northeast Spark, N-E-S-P-A-R-C, service people across road communities, two packages, the Ignite, the 100 Mbps, or their Blaze. That is their one gig option available to you. Your hometown team bringing you world-class broadband. That's nespark.com, 662-238-3159. Phone service, portal controls, network security, wireless mesh extender, and much more. So get the best internet in Lafayette County. That's 662-238-3159. Southern Traditions Farm is a 68-acre, 32-stall, upscale equestrian training and boarding facility in Canton, Mississippi. Two sand rings, a grass ring, miles of wooded trails, so much offered at Southern Traditions. Uh, horseback riding offerings. Uh, from beginner lessons to advanced to being able to compete in nationally recognized competitions. Uh, it's also a great venue for corporate outings, reunions, those types of things. So get in touch with them on Facebook or Instagram at Southern Traditions Farm. Uh, I'll have a mailbag to you later today. It's brought to you by Art Hayes of Sotheby's International Realty. Are you thinking of making a move? Put the power of Sotheby's International Realty to work for you. As a licensed agent with Sotheby's, and a supporter of all things Ole Miss, Art Hayes can help you buy or sell in your hometown or anywhere in the world at no charge to you, seriously. So call and ask Art how. 612-805-5929 or email him at Arthur, that's A-R-T-H-U-R dot Hayes, H-A-Y-S, at lakesmn.com. You watch a bunch of other spring games, I assume, tomorrow or here. I've got most of them taped. Can break that down. I'm really breaking down the third quarter of Vanderbilt's black and gold contest right now. It's going to be awesome. You'll really, I learned a lot. Did you watch a lot of spring games? I I don't know. Other than Alabama and Georgia, I could have, I could tell you who else played on Saturday. Do you know? I I don't even think I know who else played. Didn't Florida play? Is that true? I don't know. I thought they did. I think Arkansas played Florida. I don't know. Seeing a uh, big story on ESPN this morning about how service academies, you know, cause they do have, I mean, they have NFL pro days and they have players that go pro for sure. Um, how they're being impacted by this new rule that they have to immediately serve their two years of military obligation prior to oh. obtaining employment. It's a huge two years to lose that in is, this. That is. You're almost kind of forgotten a yeah, little bit. No doubt. It's the closest the U.S. has in something like this to, I think it's South Korea, because they have a lot of really good golfers. Um, before they turn, a, they're, they're allowed to pick when they do it in the age, but before they turn a certain age, they have to serve two years of military service, just period. Any male that's coming up through South Korea. So they, are, they always try to pick like when to take that two years off from golf when they're on the PGA wow. Tour and rolling and – it's a lot of time off. It's a lot of time off. Hard to get that rust off. It's 40 tournaments to make a lot of money. Rory vehemently denying that he is going to accept the live offer that was uh, reported by a British paper over the, uh, Just over the weekend. Just take the money and shut up. $850 million. No one's going to fault you for taking $850 million. And the, the crazy fringe that does... You, you don't need them. You have $850 million to block them out. Does it really matter that everybody love you or that you can make $850 million? I mean, it might because he already has three hundred. Okay, I I get it, but the calculus is different when you have, like... Yeah, but I, now I can have more than a billion dollars. Yeah, yeah, sure. And most... I, I, I'm not... 
not arguing. I'm the just people, saying he's one of the few people that does seem to really care about a legacy and being on this side of history, I if mean, you will. I get it. Now, the problem is that I kind of blame the PGA Tour for a lot of this, but that's a neither here nor there. List of people that I want to love me. List of people that it really doesn't matter. Now, are these people going to love me if I take the he money? He might just decide he can't work for the Saudis. Are these people going to still love me? They're too egregious. Me? They're too, they're oh, too violent. Can't do it. Stop. Take the money. Do your thing. Yeah, you can also, that's true. You can also win a gold medal and become exempt if you're from South Korea. But it requires oh. the gold. Oh. Some pressure there. I thought about that. I want, I mean, it would, most people would probably, I bet, I wonder if there's anybody in that Olympics golf tournament that would intentionally, was winning, and it's like, say, Sung J M was second, would intentionally blow a shot to make it where he didn't have to go be in the oh, military for two years. Maybe so. How much would you have to like a guy to go, to give up a gold medal in the Olympics so he wouldn't have to go serve his country? Or what if he's like, hey, if you do this, I'll, we'll figure something out. Well, you will be compensated. Yeah. Well here. Yeah. Yeah. It'd be a really nice steak dinner. Like we're <laughs> un we're under the table, there's like an envelope. <laughs> yeah. The Waigu will not be the the main part of that no. that, that, that that entree. No. If you uh Hey when you, you when you unroll your silverware there, just take a little take take note. Um Scotty Shuffler did win the Masters best player wins tournament. Okay. Like it my, was not overly compelling. My guy finished second. He did, oh, yes. No. Aberg or however we're pronouncing his name these I days. I just call him Lude. Oh, really? Yeah, we're Your down. boy Lude. Lude. You're on that level. Yep, we're there. Lude. Guns up, baby. Texas Tech. He is from Texas Tech. Mm -hmm. That is that is, that is, is accurate. He's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, speaking of golf, my fault, no podcast the last couple, or we had one Monday. I guess no live shows the last couple of days, no podcast yesterday. Um, thanks to Men's Golf and my buddy Chris Malloy for uh, letting me tag along with them. You'll get some content to you. And a story that, frankly, I wanted to do, but uh, I think you will find it interesting about a sport that has a lot of uh, challenges when it comes to putting rosters together that have done a hell of a job. They are currently number five in the country. They have the number two overall player in the country out of the transfer portal from NC State, Michael Lasasso. Um, he, uh, at one point yesterday was seven under through seven holes, um, on his round at, uh, at Mossy Oak there in West Point. So, uh, content coming probably early next week. They go to SECs next week. So that's probably when I'll try to get that out, but nonetheless, uh, appreciate that because it was frankly just whatever I wanted to do. So I do appreciate that, that level of access that is not always the case, uh, by any stretch of the imagination. You and Jeffrey taping tomorrow? Uh, yeah, I assume. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I have not told him we're not. So yeah, I assume we will, uh. Do that with Jeffrey. Probably, uh, I don't know. I'll find some topics. I'll find some big picture stuff to let Jeffrey opine on as the uh, get, get him off the basketball talk because I have a hunch he's going to have a full day of basketball on his other yes, shows yet sure. tomorrow. So if he would like some practice, we can do that. But if he'd like to talk about anything else, that's perfectly fine as uh, as well for that. So anyway, that's where that's uh, sitting. Uh, really good story because. Seth Wickersham has kind of become the Patriots insider these days after writing that book on the oh. Patriots. He has an excellent story on ESPN.com this morning. Uh, voted off the island inside Bill Belichick's failed job hunt and all the, oh. the different parallels of Belichick thinking he had the Falcons job. The morning that they hired the other guy thinking he had the Falcons job, Raheem Morris, and then yeah. not having the Falcons job. So really good stuff there. Great reporting be from. Uh, be curious to see if Belichick can get back in on the next cycle. Yeah, he's having a hard time, including the Falcons, with what I've read of it so far, of anyone believing that he's not going to just tinker and take over and can actually be part of a team. It's fair because that hasn't been the case. No, old dogs, new tricks, whole deal. I give ESPN some credit here because from just a reporting standpoint, three really heavy hitters. They went with Don Vanatta, Wickersham, and Jeremy Fowler for the story. All sharing the the byline so worth your read there at uh at espn take a gander at that um some of the stuff i said in the podcast a little bit on campbell smithwick coming up today on the site as far as some baseball stuff and then we'll uh get some more to you as well as uh as the week goes on again Ole miss georgia this weekend friday saturday sunday from uh foley field yeah foley field there yeah. in athens georgia which 
they've done a renovation, but that actually was the exact same original design as Swayze when it was built in 1989. They had the, literally the exact same stadium, oh. and they've just done. It's kind of neat to look at because you see how two programs have done a different renovation with off the same bone structure. But yes, Foley Field was the same as Swayze um, when it was built, whenever it was, and then Swayze was 1989. Because I remember Georgia coming over here a few years ago and looking at everything and figuring out how they wanted to how they wanted to do it. They put like some club level stuff on the in very the bottom. bottom. Yeah, yeah it's with very, glass. It, it's very distracting, actually. It is because you see all the people and the stuff, and you it's just all start field watching. Level. The, you just start watching the people. Yeah, like socializing. Yeah, so right little, behind home plate. Yeah, a little strange, but that's what they've done there at Georgia. So anyway, Jeffrey and I will be back with you tomorrow. Rebelgrove.com in the meantime. Appreciate you guys, and we'll talk to you then.